Hey there, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'd like to show you how I built this DIY overhead camera rig on modern builds. <laughs> I started this project by wheeling out my table saw. I'm gonna be ripping down a half inch sheet of plywood into three inch wide strips. Now I broke down this entire sheet of plywood because I was experimenting, I didn't know how many of these strips I would need. In the end though, I didn't even use half of this sheet of plywood. I made sure to have plenty of outfeed support and I flipped the plywood over. That way I referenced the other factory edge after I had cut halfway through it. Next, I got my strips and I started laying out all of the lines so that I could cut my pieces prior to assembly. That's what's really awesome about the PDF plans that I have linked in the description, is that you can cut the majority of these pieces before assembling anything. This makes the whole process a lot quicker. The first piece that I'll be assembling is the arm that goes between the two posts. I'll be referencing it as the stretcher. And I'm using Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel along with wood glue to attach these pieces together. First, I laid a bead of wood glue right down the center of the board. Then, I came back with super glue, and on this piece used a little bit too much, around the entire perimeter of the board, and I held everything for about 30 seconds until that super glue dried. And you'll see later on that using less super glue was actually better. It dries quicker and still has a really strong bond. The wood glue is what's gonna hold it over time. And you can see that I'm building up joints by using off-cut pieces of wood to make sure that all of my seams are staggered correctly. You'll see later on once everything assembles together. A few of my pieces though, I had to set my miter saw to 45 degrees, that way I could cut a bevel on one or both ends. Whenever you're doing this, just make sure and be conscious of where your hand is compared to the blade. I had two posts to assemble, and here I'm making the vertical sections first. Once again, using wood glue and super glue to hold everything together. On the bottom of the post, I used the thickness of one of my offcuts to offset my first piece that I attached. From there, I used one of my scrap 45 degree pieces to make sure that the void between the next piece and that first one would fit a piece really snug. From there, I did the same thing on the other side of the post as well as on the second post. As I went, I found that dots of super glue dried a lot quicker than using solid beads. In fact, that's what they recommend in the directions. I probably should have read that first. Not to mention you use a lot less super glue that way. Oh, and I should mention I used two bottles of super glue for this entire project. And even though the super glue held everything in place, I used spring clamps while the wood glue dried while I assembled other things. These two pieces are for the feet of the post. Even though this is a simple glue up, the next step is probably the most complicated of the whole thing. It involves quite a few pieces with bevel cuts, so if you plan on building this project, make sure and reference the plans here. On all of our pieces prior, we've referenced the edge of one piece whenever gluing up another, but on this leg, I'll be referencing the center of the board and working my way out. I glued my first two pieces in using the thickness of an offcut to make sure that they were offset the right distance. Then I added some wood glue and super glue to the post that we assembled earlier, and I inserted the dado at the end of that post into the void of that leg. From there, I added in my 45 degree braces on each side of the post. And just like on all of my pieces, once I had them set in place, I held them there for about 30 seconds to make sure that everything tacked. Once I knew those pieces were held in place, I could cap each end of the leg with one more piece. This is gonna lock that joint in place and make this whole post really strong. Oh, and if you're planning on building this yourself, make sure and assemble the posts the same order I did. I tried to do the whole leg, then the posts and the cross members, but it just didn't go together as easily. So with our main glue ups complete, it was time to test the fit of the joints that we created. And I'm happy to report they were really snug. In fact, I had to use a rubber mallet to knock them into place. I'm gonna be reinforcing these joints with what's called a threaded insert. This one has quarter 20 threads, which are standard for almost all photo and video equipment. On each of these joints, I'm gonna drill a hole with a 5 8 inch drill bit and then use an Allen key to thread this in. And from there, I can use a quarter 20 bolt with a star head knob to tighten everything down. I'm using knobs so that whenever I put this up or take it down, I don't have to use any tools. Really quickly, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in business, design, photography, videography, and so much more. 
I've taken multiple Skillshare classes and I love them. They're clean, concise, and organized into chapters which makes them really easy to digest and revisit any topics that you wanna look back on. Most recently, I took the course DSLR Filmmaking from Beginner to Pro by Jordi Vandeput. Premium memberships give you unlimited access to Skillshare's 25,000 courses so that you can find the right topics and communities for you and your New Year's goals. And right now, for the first 500 of my subscribers that follow the link down in the description, Skillshare is offering a free two-month trial of their premium membership. After that, an annual membership sits right around $10 a month billed automatically. So follow that link and join the over 7 million creators that are learning and taking classes with Skillshare. Thanks, Skillshare. And here, I'm using a couple of offcuts to create a T-shaped joint that is gonna be the camera base. It's a little long right now, but we'll cut it down later. And while that glue dried, I drilled some holes for some more threaded inserts along that stretcher. I centered the mount on the middle hole in the stretcher and I clamped it in place so that I could transfer the hole through the mount. Then, on the back of the stretcher, I used another threaded insert so that I could use a knob to hold that camera mount in place. I'm only setting up one hole as the camera mount. I don't really plan on having it anywhere but centered, but you could drill as many as you like. On the rest of the holes that I made, I put a threaded insert on the front of the stretcher. These are where I'm going to be mounting accessories later on in the video as well. Like I said earlier, quarter 20 threads are standard for 90% of photo and video equipment. So I just used another shorter knob with quarter 20 threads to attach the camera to the mount. Once again, I used plenty of washers to distribute all of the pressure. Then, I marked and cut that long piece to its final length so that it was out of the way of the lens, but still provided plenty of support. I also took that opportunity to trim down the top bar of the stretcher just to clean everything up and make it a little more low profile. I used 150 grit sandpaper to clean up all of the faces and the edges of all of my pieces, especially the posts and the stretcher where I had to glue up multiple pieces. It took a little work, but was totally worth it. And after that, the camera mount is done. What's really awesome about this project is how quick and easy it is to assemble, especially for the price. The rig that I built and that is in the plans fit the table that I build on perfectly. But if you build or film on something that's a different size, make sure and double check and adjust to fit your space. I'm attaching these hot shoe mounts to some of the threaded inserts on the front side of the spacers. This will allow me to connect microphones or camera lighting or any other accessories really quickly. Of course, some things are just easier to mount with a bolt, and that's why I left the threaded inserts on the outside of the stretchers open and easy to use as well. Lighting can be difficult for top-down shots, and that's why I wanted to make sure I would be able to add these simple LED panels without any trouble. So I'm really excited about adding top-down shots into my arsenal. I got these bootstrap boards linked in the description as well, which I can use to plan out different steps or do different illustrations and drawings in my videos. Text, graphics, and overlays are always really fun, but sometimes this might be a better option to describe what I'm trying to explain. Plus, drawing's fun, even though I'm bad at it. Not to mention, having this rig is gonna be really convenient for filming smaller projects where it's hard to get a camera in place without blocking it with my hands. So there you have it. This was a surprisingly easy build and I'm really happy with how quick and easy the super glue, wood glue method of assembling everything ended up being. The other really awesome thing about this project is it cost about $15 in wood and maybe another 15 or $20 in miscellaneous parts. If you plan on building this project for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description to my written article. There, I've got all of the products and supplies that I used, as well as a downloadable PDF plan. On there, I'll have this version of the build, as well as a simplified version using 1x4s and 2x4s. That way, you don't have to use a table saw if you don't have one. Amazon links for these lights and the hot shoe mounts and all of that will also be in the description. And one other recommendation that I do have for this is a wide angle lens. I typically film with a Canon 80D along with the stock 18 to 55 millimeter lens, which does work for this rig, but I do recommend picking up a 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens. With this rig using the stock 18 millimeter Canon lens, I have a workable area of three feet by about 20 inches, which I think is pretty good. Okay, so now we're sitting back at 18 millimeters, same as the last lens, but let's see what happens when we take it to 10. Zoom out. Pew. Holy cow. That is a lot of room. That is really awesome. I mean, realistically, it's more than I would be able to even use. So let's 
take it back a little bit. Let's get the frame out of the shot. So this is gonna give us a total workable area of, wow, a little over four feet, almost 52 inches by about 28 inches, 26 inches, which is really freaking awesome. Holy cow, this is way more than I'd ever even be able to use. So this comes in a really cheap kit and you can also buy it individually. I'll leave that link in the description as well. The other option is you could just build this a little bit taller. If you build this project for yourself or any other Modern Builds project, I love seeing that. Make sure and tag me on Instagram. I am at Modern Builds. And don't forget, if you've got any questions or comments, you can leave those below or hit me up with a DM on Instagram. If you're not already, I would appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. That way you can stay updated every time I post new projects. And if my videos haven't been showing up in your subscription feed, don't forget to hit the bell next to that subscribe button. I don't know what's up with YouTube lately, but I've been getting quite a few comments and messages saying that. Other than that, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.